Hello, hello, hello. Adrian here live midday Thursday on the spiritual events directory with the Where Am I Right Now Life Mastery Show. So welcome, welcome, welcome. It's very, very hot. I'm down on the Gold Coast and I'm near the ocean. I was trying to find a nice shady spot and uh, it's a little bit bright, a little bit sunny. So uh, do bear with me and hopefully you can see me clearly. If it's a little bit too glary, let me know and I will try and find the better position for you. So, because it is pretty glary down here and I thought this uh, would work. So let me just see if I can find a little bit more shade and I will set up under the shade because it's a, uh, a little bit sunny for, uh, for Adrian. So let me just go and sit down here. Here we go. I think that's probably a little bit better. I'll oh, come and sit in the shade. There we go. Much cooler for me as well. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Hopefully you can hear me. So I'd love to do a check in with you. And if you can see me, hear me clearly, just send me a message just to let me know that you can actually see me and hear me clearly. That would be fantastic and much appreciated. Yeah, hi Kate. Yeah, just a little message from somebody just to say hi. Can hear you nice and clearly, Adrian, or no, we can just see your lips moving and nothing is coming through. Hi Joyce. Yes to all. Thank you from from Tassie. So thank you very much for that. It's, uh, so I'm still in the shade and got a nice cool breeze, but it's uh, very, very glary down here on the Gold Coast today. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining me on the show. And the show is all about you. The show is how can I support you going forward? How can I support you on getting on track and staying on track in your life physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually? and any other areas that I can actually support you with. Because this is uh, what the show is all about. So we're just remembering, this is not about me tuning in uh, to the other side, to the spirit beings and getting some messages from there. This is about me empowering you to ask some very clear questions about supporting you in your life. And me then giving some insights, some support, some answers to those questions that uh, for things that are going on in your life to help you to get on track and stay on track. So let's just see uh, what people are saying. We're getting hello, 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 hello. So yeah, so hello to uh, Tash and Jen. Spiritual Events Directory. Hey, Kate. So fantastic to have you all on here. So last week we had lots of uh, different questions coming on and this week will be the same. So uh, if you do have a question, remember oftentimes when you ask a question, there are others that will benefit from you asking the question and also from receiving the answer or the insights that come from that question. So it's always a good thing uh, to find that courage, to find that vulnerability, uh, to share something and ask those questions because it does help others too uh, who maybe aren't in the space to ask the question for some reason. So, um, so that's a good thing to do. So if you have any questions, please just do type them in and I will read them and endeavour to answer the questions or give some insights into that. Just to let you know where I am, I'm just down on Kira Beach, down near Coolangatta. I was down here at 6.45am this morning. I left home at 6 o'clock and had a lovely, beautiful meditation on the beach and uh, did some yoga on the beach for 20 minutes. And then at 7.15, I set up for a breakfast network meeting group that I'm now the group leader of down here in Coolangatta. So that's very new. Today was my first role as the group leader. And it's a business network to help support businesses by giving and supporting referrals into business. So it's a really, really fantastic. So I love to help people by referring people I know into their businesses. And of course, getting referrals from others to support me in my own business too. So that was great. And we had a really lovely meeting there this morning. And now I've got this space to jump on here for an hour to share with you in the uh, where am I right now 
life mastery show to support you in your life and maybe that is around business too maybe that's around the vocation room that might be around you finding your passion and putting your passion out into the world from a vocational business perspective as well because I love doing that I love to help people and support people to get their ideas out to get their businesses going to get their thoughts about how they can help people on the planet out there from a business sense or a uh, a sense of this is my passion this is what I need to do on the planet so one of my joys is to help people in that vocational space I love watching people rise up with their thoughts rise up with their ideas and actually bring them to fruition uh, to help themselves and other people is uh, for me it's just some of my favorite work so if that's a space you're in right now and you have an idea you have an idea for a business or you want to improve your business this is a good place to ask some questions around that too so so let's have a look see if we have any anything for me please nothing in particular so Tash the way I work is uh, is about being particular it is about you being clear on the question because when it's generic it's very very hard to answer a question that's generic because I'm not using the download from messages from the spirits on the other side in this show there's plenty of other shows on the spiritual events directory doing that I'm choosing to be a little bit different than that and to empower people to find the question so Tash for you I'd say let's let's help you through this process so anything for me so Tash my question would be where at the moment in your life are things not really cruisy? Where at the moment in your life have you got some challenges? Where in your life at the moment would you like to put something else into place that's maybe not necessarily working for you so well? Because if you can ascertain and name that, if you can name the one thing or one of the things in your life right now that's not going so well and you name it, then we can put the spotlight on it and then I can support you in that process. Because when it's generic, it's actually very, very difficult. It really is. It's like taking a car into a mechanic and saying, um, look at everything in my car. You know, it's going to take the mechanic a long, long time. But if you're not specific about what you want doing, it needs an oil change or it needs a new tire. The mechanic knows what he's doing and he can actually attend to it. So let's get some clarity on the process here. And I tell you, Tash, and for anybody else listening, just take a self-evaluation for a moment. Where in your life are things going well? But maybe where are they not going so well? We need to get back on track in your life. And if you can ask that question and answer that question, then ask me a question about it and I will endeavor to support you in that process. So I hope that really helps in terms of getting this process clear on here. So let's have a look. Need some guidance, please. I like to read tarot's and oracle. So Diane, um, some guidance in what, once again, will be the question. What are you asking for guidance in? Let's get some clarity around here. What would you like some guidance in? Is it your vocation? Is it your mental health, your physical health, your spiritual health, your emotional health? What area of your life would you like some guidance in? Because I also love to use tarot and oracle cards and all those things, and I like to get some insights from them. But from a psychotherapeutic perspective, from a coaching counseling perspective, I like to bring the mind into the, into the equation. I like to bring the thinking into the equation. I like to bring the vision, the plan, and the action into the equation. So this is a bit more about being more practical about the process. And the first thing we do is naming what it is we're trying to find some guidance in. Getting that specific area. Because when we're specific, it's easier to do the guidance work with it. So if we can do that, that would be great. So Joe, what's the best way to allow connection to spirit and trust and trust it thank you that's a really good question Joe and I'd like to answer that so a great question a great question to how to allow the connection to spirit and trust it and I always say to people if you're gonna work in the spiritual realm get yourself a spiritual teacher number one like you wouldn't send your children to school if there wasn't a teacher in the classroom you wouldn't go and do a driving lesson in the car if there's not a driving instructor in the car you wouldn't go scuba diving unless there was a scuba diving instructor. So the first thing I say to people, if you want to do spiritual work, try not to guess. Because if you guess, oftentimes you'll get it wrong, you'll get lost. And working in the spiritual realm is a very challenging space. The analogy is, you know, we paddle in water, we swim in water, we snorkel in water, 
and then we can scuba dive in water. And each one has got a, needs different skills, and you need to be taught in different ways. And when you start to working in the spiritual realm, there's lots to understand. There's lots to know. There's lots to navigate. Because if you don't and you lose trust in it, which happens all the time with people, people lose the trust in that work, then they don't go back to it. They get confused in it. So part of getting the trust, Joe, is getting a spiritual guide, getting a spiritual teacher to help you in the realm specifically that you want to engage with. Because the spiritual development work is very varied, it's very wide. And depending on what it is you're actually seeking from that spiritual world is the question. Are you seeking to become a spiritual teacher yourself? Are you seeking to tune in to get some dialogue happening with spirits on the other side? Are you seeking to meditate in a spiritual way? Are you seeking to engage in some way in the spiritual world? So get clear on that first. What is your intention? What's your focus? And then from that focus, I can support you in helping you to get that trust. But let's just get clear on what the focus is. Yep. So making the connection to what? Are you trying to make a connection to spirits, to spirit guides, to people who have passed away, to angels, to archangels, to the Exusii, to the Elohim, you know, to God? What, what specific thing are you after? So that's the beginning of all my work, is about getting specific. Because when you get specific, it really helps in the process. So I hope that's clear for you, Joe. And you know, let's keep this conversation going by you getting specific, typing something else in, and then we go down the rabbit hole with you a little bit deeper. So thank you for the question, Joe. I hope that's helped. So how can I stay in a high vibration and not get caught up in the past hurts? So Jen, two answers to that question. One is high vibration is a responsibility to you to do that physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. So one is, how are you looking after your body? What vibration is your physical body in? Are you eating good, healthy, high vibrational organic food? You know, and this is no slur on people who eat meat, but if you're eating dead flesh, what vibration is that? If you're eating a really good organic carrot or a good organic cauliflower, what vibration is that? So it's about putting things in perspective for yourself on your own belief systems about what high energy is, what high vibration is. So you have to get some clarity for yourself around that, some belief systems around that for yourself of what you're eating in terms of high vibrational food. Are you eating really good high nutritious food to begin with? And then mentally, what are you doing mentally to stay in high vibration? And about getting caught up in the past hurts, that's usually because you're connected to an old story an old paradigm, the old wounds. Yeah, because we all get wounds and we carry the wounds around with us. So are you doing the psychotherapeutic work with a psychotherapist or somebody who can help you to clear the past? That will be one thing in the emotional space and that also ties in with the mental space. And also from a spiritual perspective, what are you tuning into high vibrationally in terms of spirit? So how, you, how do you stay high vibrational? You bring high vibrational things in and around you. You stay in, you know, the vortex, you stay in that space. And it's not always easy. You know, the people around you, the place you live in, the place you socialize in. Like an experience for me is, um, you know, we get invited out to social events, my wife and I. And uh, for me, alcohol is a very low vibration energy. Um, you know, a little bit of alcohol maybe is okay, but when it gets to that sort of, if you like, what I call the drunken stage, the energy in the room or the space, um, goes very low it's where there's an opportunity for negative energies and negative spirits to attach themselves into that space so i choose not to be in that space i tend to leave before it gets into that low vibrational energy space so that i'm not engaging in that low energy so that's one choice i make i don't hang around now the drug space because that's very low vibrational i tend to try not to hang around with people who use a lot of expletive um, language of swearing because for me that's low energy so it's about making the choice of staying in the high vibration um, for you Jen so it's about making a list of what's high vibration and what's not for you and then w learning to work through the whole the old hurts and pains and stories with a, um, a skilled person so if you want to do that with me 
or anybody else on here and you'd like to engage and do some work with me, the best way to do that is to go to adrianhanks.com and book in a free 30-minute session with me to ascertain what we can do together and to see if we're the right fit to work together. And you can look on my website, in the shop, in the videos, in the media uh, to see actually what I do. But uh, if you want to engage and do something with me, I'd be very happy to work with you in that space. So adrianhanks.com is the place to go to. So Amanda, I'm keep going off for business right now. I'm completely overwhelmed. I'm busy trying to set it all up and feeling so tired. So Amanda, same thing. And I say this all the time. If it's not me, and I'd love to be the person, of course, because you know, I try to get my business going and uh, flowing all the time with new clients as well, get a business coach absolutely get a business coach to help you set it up and what um, I love doing if I'm helping somebody set up their business is not just about you know the finances of how many clients I need and how much money I need to make a week that comes the important part is what vibration are you putting out in terms of your business are you aligning to the things you're putting out even down to the color the font the wording the energy the price structure, all those things from an energetic perspective also need to be included in a business plan. So you create the vision, really clear vision. Have you got a vision statement? Have you got a mission statement? Do you know where you're going? Have you got your, your client base set? Do you know how you're going to do your advertising, etc., etc. Then you do the planning and get all that into place and then you take action. But I would highly recommend getting somebody to work with. You know, I've got a, a financial coach I'm working with. I have business coaches I work with. Um, I've got a mastermind partner I work with. Uh, it's, it's really important to get the support system around you. Otherwise, yep, you get very tired. It's exhausting. Running a business is, at the beginning, very exhausting. So getting the support around you is really important, and I would highly recommend getting somebody to support you in that beginning phase. Because otherwise, what will happen is you'll burn out, and the sad part is your business may fail because of your burnout. So part of the business strategy and structure is to spend some money on business. Like this morning, I've just come away from the BX um, networking business meetings, and I go to them every fortnight. Yeah, I go to Robina, or I come here in Coolangatta, and I mix with business people. I get referrals, I get insights, I get support, I get ideas from being in that vibration of other people in business. And it's really important. So I hope that helps you there, Amanda. So Tash, I have a knee injury and I'm struggling. Okay, so Tash, the first thing is, you know, how do you cause a knee injury from a physical perspective? What's the emotion behind the knee injury? And what's the struggle? What are you struggling with? Are you struggling physically, emotionally, mentally? What do you need to do to fix it? Are you getting the best energy work on there possible? Are you taking the right supplements? You, have you got the right person teaching you how to do the right exercises? Have you got the team around you to support you? Have you got support? And if you want to give me a call, go to my website, adrianhanks.com, book in for a free 30-minute consultation with me, and I can certainly help you to move beyond this. And I'm going to share a little story. I love to share anecdotes and stories to make it real as well. Um, and this is particularly around the knee injury. This is a true story. So about four or five years ago, a friend of mine, Rob Reed in Brisbane, started a run called the Darkness to Daylight Run in Brisbane, where they run around the, the river down in uh, South Bank there. And it was to raise awareness for uh, domestic, family and domestic violence. And the first year, um, about 200 people started running. And over the last five years, it's grown, where in May, there were over two and a half thousand runners. And the first year I went in was um, five years ago, and I did the walk in the morning. And then the following year, I decided I'd do a little bit of a jog run, and I did a couple of Ks. And then after that, I did a 10K run, and then another 10K run the year after. And this year, I did a 23-kilometer run. So through the night, it's a night run. But the story behind that, um, Tash, to help you is, when Rob first asked me to come and be part of it, now, Rob was running 100Ks or you know, 110Ks and 90Ks and others doing the same. And I didn't feel equipped. And my subconscious mind was saying to me, you're not good enough. You're not going to be up there with a the pack. You're going to let people down. You're going to not be able to perform. You know, you're going to be laughed at. All this old story stuff was coming up in my subconscious mind. 
And what happened for me, Tash, I booked in to do the 10K run on the second year, and I had a knee injury. And what happened was I had a, an x-ray on my knee, and what happened was I had a bit of floating bone on my kneecap, and it was causing me pain every time I ran. So I went to see a specialist after the x-ray, and I said, look, I've got a floating bit of uh, bone on my knee, and he sent me to another specialist. And that specialist was really rude to me in the room. And I stood my ground and I spoke to him and I said, you know what, how dare you speak to me in that manner? Who the hell do you think you are? And, and I left the room, I left the meeting, I went to the receptionist, I said, that bill, I think it was like 330 bucks I was gonna pay to this specialist, is not gonna be paid. He was really rude. I, took, I looked at everybody in the waiting room and I said, if you're going into that room, be aware that this man can be really rude. So stand your ground, have your boundaries. I went away. I started healing work on my, uh, on my knee. I looked into the emotion behind why it was there, which was letting people down and not feeling good enough. I went back for another um, test. That piece of bone that was floating in my knee is now totally gone with no surgery, just emotional work. So get behind the emotion is the message there as well, Tash, and I hope that story helps. So Diane, how do I rid myself of the fear of moving forward with myself doing readings? Okay, Diane, it's a really, really good question because the lack of self-trust in the work is really what's sitting there I'm suggesting here. And the question is, why don't you trust yourself? Why aren't you trusting yourself? Because if there's a fear around moving forward with yourself in the readings, yep, there's a doubt there, there's a fear there. So what's the doubt and what's the fear? Name the fear, name the doubt, that's step one. And then finding somebody, you know, come and do some work with me if you choose to, to ascertain what that fear and doubt is. It's probably an old story, it usually is. Let's clear up the old story so you can move forward with clarity and with courage rather than with fear and doubt. Because they're the, the fear, doubt and self-hatred are three beasts. They're the ones that stop us from moving forward in life. So we have to bring in the clarity, we have to bring in the courage, we have to bring in the self-love rather than the self-hatred. So we have to work on those, but we have to do it by naming them, by getting the clarity on what is the fear, what is the doubt, what's stopping you moving forward. And once again, have you got a teacher to help you in that space? Is there somebody you recognize as an authority in that space that you can get counsel from, to get support from? Really, really, really important. Otherwise, it's really easy to get lost. And sadly, what happens in that space when people get lost, when they get fearful, when they get the doubt, and they're not coming and doing spirit work from clarity, yeah, then the ego gets involved, and then people start to make things up to feel good, and it's a disservice to the client. And it happens a lot. It's a disservice to the client, because it becomes guesswork, it becomes ego work, rather than clear channeling or clear readings. You know, and you know the ones that are doing the clear readings, because they're in a good space, and he knows the ones that are not. Because of the fear, because of the doubt, because of the lack of self-love, and not looking after oneself, and not opening oneself to bring that clarity through. So if you want to be clear, Diane, you know, name the fear, name the doubt. If you want somebody to work with, contact me, and I'm happy to break through that with you. If you go to my website, to adrianhanks.com, and go into the shop, into the store, there's actually a free video on there, on the three beasts, on fear, doubt, and hatred. And you might want to watch that 20 minute video. And it explains a lot about fear and doubt and self-hatred. And it might give you insights on, on how to move forward. So I hope that helps you. So Tash, needing a knee replacement, but I'm only 44, many in operators. Okay, so I would suggest, what is it that you're working with? The knee replacement, what's shattered? Do you need more cartilage? Now, what's happening in the knee? What's the damage to it? Was, this, what is it? was it a sports injury? Because there's a lot of people who have knee replacements and there's a lot of people that don't who manage to fix the knee, particularly if you get into the emotion behind it all. So what actually aspect of the knee needs replacing? Does it just need some more cartilage growth? Could you do some stem cell growth in there? Could you do some exercises? Is there another specialist you can talk to? You know, there's lots of other ways usually of looking at a situation. And I don't know whether you've explored everything. Yeah, I don't know if you've explored everything yet. But if you're in pain 24-7, what's the pain? 
Is it local pain? Is it specific pain? Is it a nerve ending pain? Is it a cartilage grind pain? Is there some emotion behind the pain? So it's about really ascertaining what's in there, what's going on in there. Have you done some artwork around it to really look at what's behind it? So there's many aspects to look at it, uh, Tash, and I'm not, I don't know if you've done that or not yet, but if you haven't, I would suggest look at all aspects. You know, you may just choose to do surgery and that's okay if that's not your choice, but if you don't want to do it and you think there's an alternative, then you have to explore all the alternatives. Otherwise, by all means, go and get the replacement if that's what you feel you need to do. And that's okay too. It's okay to do what you need to do. But as long as you're comfortable with it, as long as you make the conscious choice around it. That's, that's the uh, thing. Yeah, hi, Amber. Hi, lovely. Fear of being rejected, I suppose. Overcoming that fear of non-believers. Yep. Um, yeah, rejection's a big one. You know, criticism's a big one. All those different old stories. You know, what's the story, Diane, behind the rejection? Where did that stem from? And 90% of all our stories come from childhood, through you know, early childhood or teens, because of some rejection. And then the rejection story stays with it, and then we bring that into other aspects of our life. So we clear up the old story, and we engage in a new story about feeling needed, feeling wanted, feeling loved, rather than feeling rejected or abandoned. And fear of the non-believers. Well, maybe it's the non-believers that um, you choose not to engage with and you only employ people who believe in that work. That might be a good way around that. Excuse me, I'm just going to chase my water bottle because the big wind just came through and blew my water bottle away. There it is, because I need my water. You can see how glorious it is. That it's very shiny, very, very windy. So I'm just going back into my shady spot, up the steps. It's amazing the places I actually do these shows from all over the world, all over Australia. I've done them from India, uh, from Belarus, from um, Kuala Lumpur, from di all the different states in Australia Is because uh, I'm committed to these Thursdays. And it's quite amazing. So I'm just sitting here on the Gold Coast near the ocean. You might better see the ocean there behind the life service, North Kira Beach. So, yeah, just to get back to that, uh, Diane, it's about... Uh, Maybe not working with the non-believers, but finding the believers to start with. That might be your target market. You have to look at that. Tash needing guidance on motivation to do house duties when I'm in pain with my knee. 24-7, yeah. So we have to find a way around that, Tash. Is there a way to get somebody in to do the house duties for you? Is there something you can trade or swap or do? So it's about looking outside the box sometimes to help you and to support you on that journey. Because it might be that you have an old story about not being supported, about moving forward. Because emotionally, I know it's hard to be generic sometimes, but with the knees, oftentimes it is about moving forward. It is about bending. Yeah, it is about going down on our knees sometimes. So there's some emotional things that can be connected to the knee, but I don't try to be too generic sometimes because it's quite individualized as well. So I'd love to know what's behind the story of your knee with you. So if you want to work with me, let's get behind that. Let's help you. Let's think outside the box. Let's get life back on track for you. Because what I love doing, the skill I have, is to help people to get back on track physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. It's what I love doing. And I think outside the box to get, to get people in that space. So if you want to get back on track and you want to stay on track, Tash and anybody else, please do make the contact. Oftentimes, it's about taking that first step. Oftentimes, it's about making that contact sending the email, making the phone call, going to the website. It's about taking action. Rather than staying in the pain, rather than staying in the old paradigm, we have to take action to get out of it. And sometimes that action is the phone call. It's actually asking for support. It's actually about booking a session with somebody like myself. So that's what I want to inspire you to do today, is to start the process by making a phone call, going to my website or going to my Facebook page or contacting me in some way to get the process moving. Otherwise, next week, it's the same story. Otherwise, in a month, it's the same story. I'm in pain, nothing's changed. So if you're in pain or something in life is not working for you, take the responsibility to make the change by making a call and asking for support. That's what I'd be saying here to you. Okay, thank you, Tash. Jen, not eating well at the right now. Good advice, yeah. So let's look at what you're not eating or what you are eating. You know, let's make a choice about that, uh, Jen. You know, let's make it a choice for you to eat well. It's a choice. 
You either eat well or you don't. We had that conversation this morning. I was at a breakfast meeting this morning. They brought out a lot of pastries that were um, wheat and gluten, and I don't very do very well on wheat and gluten, and that's really hard because I'm actually a baker by trade. So I asked them specifically, can you please bring me some you know, gluten-free, non-wheat uh, toasty sandwiches with pumpkin and things in there? And they did. They, they brought me my food, and everybody looked and went, wow, that looks fantastic. I said, yeah, because I've learned to look after myself. I've learned not to put up with, I've learned to ask for what I need, and I had a really lovely breakfast this morning. So, and I also had beautiful organic fruit as well, which was nice. Um, Sarah Marie, how do you get let go of hurts from the past? Uh, Sarah, you see a therapist like me. So I'm a coach and mentor, but I'm also a psychotherapist counselor. Because the hurts in the past need some psychotherapeutic work. It's not something you're gonna get rid of, unless you do the psychotherapeutic work, from my perspective. I know there's others that say you can get rid of it by using other things, but from all my experience over the last 25 years in this field, unless you go to the emotion, unless you delve in and actually see the emotion, work with the emotion and change the emotion by understanding and being with it, you won't truly get rid of it. It'll come back in another guise. You know, it'll come back in another guise. It really will. You can have energy healing around it, do some clearing, you can do some um, work around it with, uh, with scenting or with some saging or with some other aspect of walking on the beach or meditations but are you, are you truly really going into the hurt into the pain and changing that pain by understanding the pain by doing the psychotherapy to change the mindset because you have to use the mind to change the mindset yep. it's like you need a spade to dig a hole you have to have the right tool for the right thing and if you're going to do psychotherapeutic work, you have to use the psyche, which is the mind, so and the soul. So if you're going to do psychotherapeutic work, use the psyche. And that's what I do. I'm a psychotherapist. So if you want to get into the hurt and change the hurt from the past, then for me, psychotherapy is maybe not all the answer, but it's certainly a big part of the, uh, the answer. So very happy to work with you in that counseling psychotherapeutic space, if that's what you wish to do, and if you want to clean up some of those old hurts. So, Cherie, how do I stop letting anger from close ones affecting me, even when it's not me, they're angry with? I know it goes back to childhood trauma and from past. So once again, Cherie, same answer I just gave to Sarah. You know, book in for a session, do the psychotherapeutic work. And one of my favorite tools that I work with, I've actually got an arrow, like a real arrow, one that you can shoot from a bow. In my studio, I use it often on myself and with my clients. And it's like we all have these arrows in us all the time from old hurts, from old wounds. And we walk around with these arrows, these old wounds stuck in our psyche, stuck in our heart, stuck in our mind, stuck all over our body. And when somebody triggers that by brushing up against it, yeah, we get angry, we go into reaction, some reaction happens. And it's usually not about that person that's brushed up against the arrow. And they may have said something or done something or looked at us in a certain way that's triggered an old memory of an old hurt. And then what we do, we project that old hurt back onto the person we've perceived has given us a hurt, usually a close one like a partner or family member. And it's not really about them at all. So others do the same to us. We trigger other people by brushing up against them and brushing up against their old wound or the, their old hurt. And then they project that back on us. So it's a two-way system. So all we have to do is learn not to react, not to project, not to go into judgment, but to stay focused, to stay calm, and have some tools and resources at our disposal to help us going into reaction, projection, and judgment. And I speak a lot about that in my work. I do a lot of work around reactions, projection, and judgments, and about staying present so we're not triggered. So we have to do the trigger work. And that's about clearing up the old wounds. And most of them are from childhood or from earlier relationships. So we have to clear those old wounds up so we don't project and react and judge anymore. Hard work, not easy work, but I think it's essential work in the spiritual and personal development space. So I hope that helps, Sherry. Once again, contact me, adrianhanks.com. Uh, call, Facebook, message me. Uh, go and book in for a session and we can help you. And just before I move on, for those of you who are within you know, a few hours driver, if you want to fly up from wherever you're living, in um, the end of the month, on the 30th of November, which is a Saturday, and Sunday the 1st of December, I've actually got a two 
day workshop on the Gold Coast in Southport working on this stuff. So it's a life mastery workshop. So it's a health, well-being and life balance workshop specifically working on all these issues and challenges. So if you want to take a, two days out for you, for yourself, to come and do some deep personal spiritual work and go away feeling more whole, more connected, more in alignment with your life, then I'd suggest, you know, make the investment in time, energy and money and come along to this two-day workshop live with me, with Adrian, on the Gold Coast in Southport for two days on the 30th of November and the 1st of December and spend those times like 16 or 17 solid hours of deep deep work maximum of 16 people in the room so you get attention you get folk you get notice you get focused on you get work and you will get some really positive changes in that time so two days so make the commitment come along get make the investment and come along and help to change your life get rid of some of those pains get rid of some of those old wounds make some new actions in your life get a new vision create something you know bring your business plans along bring your life plans along let's work on that two full days it's going to be a magical two days and i'd love to have you there with me so so joe okay so i'm in adelaide who would you suggest see for guidance look uh, contact me joe um, i do a lot of work online and um, let's start there and either you can continue with me online and do some work but if there's something specific where you want to do face to face in Adelaide I can certainly find somebody for you there in Adelaide to work with um, Arlene has lots of connections there with her life alignment work and we can certainly find somebody to work with in that space for you agree alcohol yak yep yeah I don't uh, get into the alcohol space very much Jen Amanda thank you great I've had a tooth problem for a year and dentists don't know why yet after 10 visits. Well, that's really interesting. Probably um, maybe it's not dental is. Have you thought about that? Maybe it's not a tooth problem. Maybe it's not a tooth problem. Maybe it's a psychological problem. Maybe it's not a tooth problem at all. Um, another little story, true story. Um, I had a uh, really bad tooth, uh, top left hand side. Uh, Going back, this is when I was in, um, first moved to Sydney, so this is about three and a half, nearly four years ago. And it was really bad, like it was aching, 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 aching and aching. And I went to see the dentist and he said to me, oh, you need a root canal. You need, you know, take all the nerves out. And I did some research on it and 80 or 90% of all root canal work in dentistry is not needed. It's a waste of time. And it's a, you know, I'm being a bit controversial here, but it's a big scam because it costs lots of money. You go and you get all the nerves and everything taken out and actually doesn't make any difference. And it's, you know, there's a lot more to do. And what it was for me, there was actually something caught down in my tooth that was causing me pain. It was caught in a little gap where it hadn't been filled properly. So it wasn't actually even a root canal at all. It was just a way for this, you know, dentist to make more money out of me. And I never went back to him again because after I realized what it was, and I, I got, it was a bit of seed and I took the piece of seed out. The pain went away. I got the, the tooth filled uh, in that little tiny spot. It was a tiny, minute little hole. And since then, I've never had a problem. But what was behind that for me was I've actually got a wisdom tooth coming through here as well. And it's been trying to come through for the last five years. And it's slowly breaking through. Every few weeks, I get a bit more pain. And behind that, there's some growth happening. You know, the, there's an expression of growth for me in my, if you like, my inner wisdom. And it's being represented physically with my wisdom tooth coming through. So my question to you in response to your question is, is it a tooth problem? What's going on for you? What's the pain? What's the issue? Let's look behind that. A bit like my knee, you know, the bit of floating bone on my knee, it disappeared. How, how do you actually get rid of a floating bit of bone that disappears? Yeah, it's like it's a pretty magical place when we get beyond just the physicality of us of ourselves when we get into the psyche when we get into the spiritual side so liz if you want to go down the rabbit hole give me a call and we will work on whatever that tooth issue is for you and we'll find a way whether it's me or somebody i know who can work with you other than a dentist because what's the point of going back another 10 times to get 10 more dentists telling you you know that they don't know what's wrong that's just that's a waste of time energy and money for you so Trish, 
needing knee replacement, no appointment till April next year. Okay, if that's what you really need, that's what you have to go for, Tash. But meantime, maybe there's more you can do. A different pain management. Are you getting acupuncture? Are you getting some energy work? Are you looking at um, some knee manipulation work with a really good chiropractor? You know, have you looked at every other alternative? Or have you, you know, closed down to that alternative? Have you got the open mind to go and try something absolutely brand new before April to maybe take some of the pain away? Or maybe even stop the replacement at all? That's another further conversation if you're willing to have it. Okay? If you're willing to have it. But you have to make that choice. Thank you for the question and thank you for the responses. Diane, thank you. Yes, no cartilage. Oh, yeah, no cartilage. So have you thought about how to replace that cartilage? Is there a way to start to do some... Um, stem cell replacement or cartridge replacement or an alternative to that you know, maybe there's not but i'm just think, trying to get you to think outside the box a little bit and see and particularly pain management what do you do with your pain management until you can have the knee replacement so brie loving the button okay oh yeah okay <laughs> thank you thank you that's actually from my bx networking this morning all the leaders wear a smiley face so the people in the audience or in the in the group can come to the leaders who are smiling and i do love a smiley face in fact when i send text messages to people i make a habit of leaving a smiley face after my messages and uh it, it's something i do i love the smiley face yay i love that i'm trying to make better healthier choices and food as i know it's important i was explaining somebody this morning in the uh breakfast network they were asking me what i do so they can refer me on to their clients and i said i'll even go to a supermarket with my clients to help them to fill their shopping basket full of good food if they're a bit stuck if they're not educated in um food change because a lot of us get brought up in a certain way to eat certain foods because the grandparents did it the parents did it the family did it etc so we have certain cooking styles or food eating habits that often need changing and it's just about educating people, helping people to make the change, to know what to buy. Because some people don't know what to buy, particularly if they come from a conventional family or conventional food space. They may not know what to eat or how to put food together. They may not know what tempeh or tofu and uh, quinoa and all those other healthy foods are. And the fear of going to ask for that in case they get the word wrong, you know, you know, quinoa is not an easy word, you know, the way it's spelled. So if people are a bit afraid to even ask for it because of fear of getting it wrong and fear of being judged, it stops people changing. Sometimes simple things like that, simple things like that, just, you know, the fear of naming something or the fear of ordering something in case the order's wrong, the fear of understanding what tempeh or tofu is or something different. It's, you know, it's quite an interesting psychological phenomenon for people to change their habits out of fear. So I help to support people by giving them food lists, by helping them to send them recipes or sending them to restaurants or talk to foodies to help them on that process. So, uh, you know, healthier choices is sometimes about the fear of health, healthier choices rather than education around it. So, uh, so Brie, good luck with that. If I can support you in any way, please contact me. Sounds like magic. Natasha, absolutely it is magic. I love living in the magical world and I love making magic and I love creating magic. It is magical. Every day I feel like a magician. Every day I feel like that magician creating something new in my life. Physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, in my relationship. Having a magical moment with my partner, with Arlene. I had a magical moment this morning with the group I was with. We had fun this morning, that was magic. We created something special in the group this morning. That was magic. I sat and meditating on the beach this morning. Kira Beach on the Gold Coast for 20 minutes. That was magic. So I love magic. I love it. Absolutely love magic. And we can create it. And if we choose to create it, we can create it. Awesome that you can do it online too. Yeah, I love the magic of online. I love the magic of technology. I was sharing some the other day. I used to be quite a Luddite. A Luddite, you know, was people who used to go and break the machines and stop technology and, you know, going back to the old way of, you know, human energy and doing things the hard way and not have the machines to do the printing and technology. 
Technology is great as long as we share the resource of what the technology is doing. So rather than making one person rich and making 10 people poor, I'm a great believer in technology as long as everybody benefits. So we all benefit financially, we all benefit energetically, we all benefit through having more time. It's when the greed comes in where one person benefits or a few benefit and the rest get left behind and get damaged by the decision of bringing something new in. So I love technology when everybody benefits. I love it. And what changed for me was about um, 14 years ago, I went to Dubai. And 14 years ago, Dubai was like no other city on the planet for me. It was like going to the Jetsons. It was like going into something from the 21st century. And part of me didn't really enjoy it. It was like, oh, I'm a bit afraid of it because I don't understand it. I didn't understand technology. I was afraid of the newness of it. I was afraid of the shininess because it, for me it was like I want to get back to being the old um, self and you know, living in the past a bit. And then a few years later, I went to Abu Dhabi in Dubai again and I embraced it. And I started to embrace technology and look at how to work with technology and get, create my own websites and start to do Facebook Lives and do all that. And now I love technology as long as we all benefit. So for me, it's about um, really working online and enjoying working online. Because I don't have to be face to face with somebody, physically next to them, because energy is energy. I can create energy with somebody face to face through a screen. I really can. I can't do massage through it, it's a bit different, but we can create energy, we can, can create magic through it. So uh, Natasha, sinus problems perhaps, um, Oh, I think you may be referring back to the tooth um, issue. I'm not quite sure. Um, but yeah, look, we don't know until we check it out, Natasha. Let's, it could be sinus. It could be a million things. And until we actually sit down and have a session together to ascertain what that is, we can all speculate and guess. You know, so it's about getting the clarity on what that specific thing is and working through with the client each and every time for them to let us know what's actually going on in their story, what's going on physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, then we can name it. And then once we name it, we can tame it, we can heal it. But we have to name it first, we have to get specific on it. So working next and with the client, we can ascertain what's actually going on. And sometimes it's not physical. Sometimes it is emotional, sometimes it's spiritual. Yeah, and we have to work out what that is and then we can clear it up. You know, nearly every time we can clear something up as long as we know what the root cause is of the issue. So. Hey, Nettie, good to see you on here. Kate, good to see you on here. Yeah, thank you, Cherie, too. So any other questions on there? So just to reiterate, if you're free on the 30th of November and the 1st of December, Saturday and Sunday, put it in your diaries. I would say to you, actually, unless you have something on like a wedding or something that you, know, you cannot get out of, change whatever's in your diary right now for Saturday the 30th and Sunday the 30th, 30th of December and come and book yourself in for two days with Adrian on Southport and do this health and well-being yeah, and life balance workshop for two days because I'm telling you it'll be life-changing for you I guarantee it I guarantee in fact come along and pay it's 300 bucks for the weekend if you really seriously walk away without a life change I'll give you your money back like I'm so committed to the work I'm so sure that the work will help to change your life that I will give that 100% guarantee. Pay 300 bucks and you come to me Sunday night and said, Adrian, I didn't learn anything from this. I didn't come away with any changes. Obviously, you have to put in the work to do. Then I will absolutely guarantee that I'll give you money back because I, I want people to change. I want to guarantee that. So I know you will have life changes. I know something will shift. But you have to put in the time, the energy, the money to do it and you have to be committed to doing it. So if you've done work with me before, come along and learn more. If you haven't done work with me, come along and learn and actually make some life changes for yourself. Southport for two full days. You know, get to your diary right now and put it in there. Book in right now, go to my website or call me and book in. And commit to making some life changes. Because I guarantee when you wake up Monday morning after those two days, life will be different for you. So it really will. So any other questions? While I'm waiting for any questions to come through, I'm just going to uh, have a big sip of water. So I just need to steady my phone. I just love being alive.
anything and everything can happen. It's not about being perfect, it's about being real. It's about engaging and it's about uh, doing what needs to be done in the space. And in this space it's about helping people to get on track and stay on track in the best way that I can. And uh, I really do hope that that's working for you. I'm hoping that you're actually getting something from listening in and watching in and taking it on board to take the action. Not to just come on here and listen in and then not take action. Because that's detrimental to you, to you and your space. So my encouragement to you, my challenge to you, is to take the responsibility to take the next step of whatever that next step is. The next step of making a phone call. The next step of jumping on my website. The next step of contacting me. The next step of making an appointment. The next step of you know, downloading that journal on my website for free. Downloading some videos and watching some videos. But getting clear on what it is you need to change. Making the choice of what needs changing. Naming it. And then you know, create the vision, create the plan, create the action. And then do it. Because if you don't do it, nothing changes. Seriously. If you don't do it, nothing changes. So what are you doing to change? What action are you going to take today in this moment to make the changes for you? What's the next level? If you've already done something with me or with somebody else, what's your next level? You know, because we change. We're different levels, different work needs different levels. You know, we start with kindergarten, then we go to primary school, then we go to high school, then we go to university, and then we go out into the world and do our PhD, and then we go into mastery. You know, we do all those levels. And it's the same with personal and spiritual development. You know, we just continue. There's another level. There's another level. I've been on this journey now for over 25 years. And some things are still the same. Some things are still the same exercises. I've been doing the same meditation for 20 years every single day. I'm not going to change that because it works. I still do other meditations. You know, I do some yoga. It works. I do journaling. It works. I go to the gym. It works. I'm on a healthy diet. It works. I have a really good relationship. It works. I have really beautiful sex with my wife. It works. We have intimate moments. It works. I have a good business. It works. I have good coaches. It works. But it's about naming what you require and going out to get it. And that takes energy. That takes commitment. That takes breaking through some fears and old stories. So if you're willing and ready, take action. Take action. That's my message for you today. Without action, nothing changes. Without booking in for a workshop or a session, nothing changes. Without getting a coach, nothing really changes. It's about making the commitment for change. That is not always easy. Oftentimes we come up with excuses of why we cannot engage in something, why we can't do something. Well, change the paradigm. As I said this morning, I kept sharing with, uh, with Denise, a friend of mine this morning, uh, something big happened, there's a big change uh, for me in the last few days. I'm involved with a, um, a big company um, for financial freedom. So we do financial education and financial freedom. And I do a lot of my financial education within this organization. And I've built a team and I sign people up into the business and um, get compensated well for it. And over the last two days, the business leaders have gone through a restructuring. And they've totally changed the name of the business, like totally. It's actually just been taken away. It's been wiped out. Can't use it, won't use it. There's a whole new name. Any hats, pens, t-shirts, business cards, websites, Facebook pages with the old name has to be taken away and the new name has to be put in. And that has to be done quite immediately. And I said a few times this morning, I have a choice. I can react to that and I can fight that or I can breathe and I can go with the flow. I can get rid of all my brochures, get rid of all my business cards, get rid of all my t-shirts and hats, change the websites, change the Facebook pages, and move on and embrace the newness. It's a choice. Breathe or react. Engage or react. Judge, react, blame, project, or breathe, or move on. It's a choice, and I've chosen to embrace it 
not to go into some old story about how dare they, I need to know more, blah, 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 whatever those old paradigms are for myself. But to be the leader in the organization, to embrace it, and over the next two weeks, rather than reacting and questioning it and arguing with it, because it's going to happen anyway, why waste that time and energy? Why not be a leader of the pack and embrace it and move forward and build my team in the new paradigm? So that's what I'm choosing. Choosing to breathe rather than to react and judge and project. So I'm suggesting we can all do that. But it takes conscious choosing. It takes a paradigm shift. It takes really hard personal and spiritual development work to be able to get to that place in life where we can choose that rather than react and project and judge. I'm telling you, I know I've been doing it for 25 years and there's still remnants of it. There's still some nuggets of that that want to get into that space. That old Adrian wants to go into that space. But the new me, the one that's done the personal development work and the spiritual development work, doesn't have to go there anymore because it's just old story. But I've done the psychotherapeutic work and the healing work to recognize the old story, to put the old story aside and to bring in the new story. The new story is breathe and embrace rather than react and judge and project. So it's very, very different. And I'm inviting you to be able to come and do the same. And you can learn lots of that by working with me one-on-one -on -one or coming along to a workshop. And if you're in a workshop, of course, you get to create new friends, connect with new people, become part of the community. And that often that community then goes forward together in uh, ways that we can even consider right now. New friendships, new connections, new business connections, new friendships. So uh, if you're open to it, come along and do a couple of days with me or at least come and book in and have a free 30 minute consultation with me to ascertain where you are right now in life. And also if you've done some work with me before, are you continuing the resources? Or are you continuing using the tools? Do you need a refresher with me? Do you need to go to the next level? Can we take you to the next level? Whatever that is for you. So, look, we're coming to the top of the hour. There's a couple of minutes left. I want to thank everybody for jumping on here. It's been a great communication, great conversation. It's a great insights and great questions. And I implore you to keep the work going because personal and development work Spiritual development work does not stop. Once you're on the carousel, it's really hard to get off, but you have to keep doing the work. You have to keep doing the work. To grow, you have to do the work. You have to nurture it. You have to feed it. You have to find the right people around you, the right team, the right support, the right nurturing for you. So if I can be part of that team, if I can be part of that nurturing, love to be part of that with you. So do contact me. I say the best place, adrianhanks.com and uh, do contact and let's have a conversation together so once again thank you thank you thank you i'm going to leave this spot now on uh, kira beach on the gold coast and head north and head home and uh, get into my day there's lots and lots and lots more to do so namaste lots of love and blessings to you and uh, do please connect and also please invite others to join us on the thursday midday queensland time on this Life Mastery Show. It's a pleasure to work with you. Thank you. Take care. See ya.